Creating looping animations with Framer, like this text cycle effect, requires us to use the looping method to get a seamless, infinitely looping animation. In this video, that is exactly what I'm teaching you. And the best part is that we're not writing a single line of code, just drawing rectangles on a design canvas. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So basically, this is what we're building in this video. You can see we have a text layer and it just cycling through multiple words, which is really cool because we have one word or one sentence and the end of the sentence is just changing. Really cool, just an infinite looping text cycle effect. However, in this video, I'm not only talking about this, this is going to be giving you some skills that you can use for basically any looping animation because to make sure that these effects are actually seamless and like infinite and looping, we have to make sure that we're building it properly. And there's a really specific technique that we have to use to, to create these, uh, because otherwise we cannot make sure that they are actually like infinitely looping. So yeah, it has to have a clever structure. So let me walk you through how we create something like this. So first of all, we just want to build the base. We want to have multiple text layers below each other. So I already have a text stack here and the, it is set to vertical direction, distribute start, and the alignment is on the left, gap is zero. We have a text layer within and I can just duplicate the text layer to write different words. So I can write dream and then I can also write lovely. So now we have these three text layers and the wrapping frame, the text, is actually set to a fixed height so that it only fits the first, first text layer. So the height is just that. If you would have more, more text layers would be shown because actually what we will end up doing is we're gonna set the overflow of the text stack to hidden. So we only see one text layer at a time. But for now, let's keep it visible. So basically this is the base that we have and I just wanna show you what happens if we start looping these continuously. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go and select all of these text layers, wrap them in additional stacks. So I'm gonna either option command and enter, press those keys or just right click and add stack. I'm gonna also make sure that this stack is also left alignment, zero gap and start distribute. And this can be fill width and fit height that's completely okay. I'm gonna rename it to text layers. Now I can start moving these text layers with a loop effect. So on the right panel, effect is selected loop. And then I can make sure that the rotation is zero. And then I think the offset Y will be adjusted. So these text layers will start moving to the top and it is going to stop somewhere around here, I think. Yeah, like right here. So this is how we create a loop, I guess. But if we start looking at this, you know, it doesn't look really great, but if we make the text overflow hidden, we can see something like this. So they are looping, but there's a, there's an issue. And this is what you will you know notice when you, when you try creating something like this. And that's the fact that when this is looping, it just has this weird jumping effect because when we reach the last word, which is right here, lovely, this is where the loop ends and then resets, starts from the beginning, which is great. So the first text that we see and the last text that we see is not the same. And that's basically the issue. So the simple fix that we'll have to make sure we do is to duplicate the last word here and make sure that here this says great as well. And now if we go to the text layers loop effect and start adjusting it a little bit more because now we have an extra text layer, we have to offset a little bit more to reach this point here. Now we're gonna see that the first and last text layer is matching so that if I set the overflow here to hidden and I preview this, you're gonna see that I don't see any weird jumping and I see a continuous loop when in reality it's actually going up and then resets to the bottom and then going up again. So in reality, it's not like a continuous loop where like new text layers is getting generated and like going to the top. It's actually just four text layers and they're moving up, then jumping back to the bottom and then moving up again. 
So this is the little trick that we have to make sure we do to have a seamless looping cycle effect. Now, of course, it's great that we have this effect. We can also, you know, customize the loop transition to make it a little bit slower. So we have something like this. However, the original you can see has a different effect. A text moves to the top, it stops there and then starts moving again. So for each word, we have a little bit more time to read it. So to make something like this, we have to create it with component variants. And you're gonna see that in component variants, we're gonna have to use the same technique. We're gonna have to make sure that if we have, for instance, three different words, we have to create an additional fourth text layer, which basically has the same content as the first one. So on the right panel, I'm gonna remove this loop effect. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn the text's frame into a component. So create component, create. Cool. So now here we are within the component canvas. Here we can create different variants for the component. We're gonna animate between those variants and that's how we're gonna get the effect. However, here we're gonna have to play around with the transitions and how we are moving between these variants automatically to make sure that it's gonna be really like a seamless transition between all of these uh, variants. So variant one, let me just here set the overflow to visible so we can see all of them. So this is going to be variant one. I'm gonna create another variant and I'm just creating the different states for the animation. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna actually just make sure that the text layers is an absolutely position element. It's pinned to the left and to the top with zero pins. And then on variant two, I'm gonna just move it to the top. So I'm gonna do this. And then you can see it's minus 54. The top pin is now minus 54. So what I'll have to do is I'll just have to use this like minus 54, actually not 54, I think we need 53. Let me just have minus 53. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to create another variant and I can really easily calculate the value that I have to uh, set here. Minus 53, minus 53. So it's gonna be minus 106. You can see lovely is now here within the variant frame perfectly. So then we have variant four, where we go minus 159. And now as you can see, we have all of the necessary variants. So how do we actually transition between these automatically? The interaction that we have to use is called appear. So we select the first variant, we connect from here to the dream, and then we go there on appear. It's really important to have a little delay between these two movements. I think I'm gonna have 0.4. It's really important to have around the same delay that we have here on transition time. So if your primary transition here on the primary variant is 0.4 seconds, make sure that your appear delay is also around 0.4. It can be slightly lower, but yeah, 0.4 should be, or the same you know, time should be fine. 0.4, so then from here, we go to the next variant, but as you can see, since I added the appear effect to the primary, now we got added to all of them because everything I do with the primary is also added to all of the other variants. So let me just remove these appear effects from the rest of the variants. And by the way, appear is a trigger type that is happening when this variant is just on the screen. So it essentially it just happens automatically when, it, when we load the website. So we go from here, I can also press down L on my keyboard to connect to the next variant, appear, 0.4 delay. From here, we're gonna go here. And as you can see, we're just creating a full loop because we go through these, and then from the last one, we'll go back to variant one on appear again, 0.4. So now you might think, yeah, we have created a full loop and it should be good. You can see this right here, it's moving up, perfect, but let me just set the, you know, the overflow to hidden so we see what we should be seeing. Looks really cool. However, you can see that when we go back to the first variant, everything moves down. And, you know, it doesn't really give a seamless, continuous looping effect that we are looking for. So how do we fix this? Well, this is what I wanted to talk about here, you know, it's really important to set these transitions up in a smart way. We have to animate 
everything when we go from great to dream to lovely and to great again. However, when we go from great to great, we don't want to see any animation. It should be an instant switch. And since they are both the same text content, we're not going to see that we actually switched from variant 4 to variant 1. However, all of the other text layers will be back in their current position. So they're going to be back here on the bottom so they can start moving up again. So we reach this point. Everything is here on the top, but we want to move them down here. But we don't want to see as it actually moves back down. So what we do is from here, variant 4, we're going to go to variant 1 as an instant transition. So let me set it back to overflow hidden and variant one will have transition set to instant. So I have to set it to instant on variant one because when I animate or sorry, when I go to that variant, I want to make sure that that transition is instant. However, everything else needs to be, you know, normal like spring transitions. So since I did it on the primary, it changed on every single variant. I have to set them back to spring now. So instant has to be spring instead, and this one as well. Now let's take a look at this. Great dream, lovely, great. It looks great. However, we see a little issue. On great, we wait a little bit more than what we would need to wait, right? So the reason why this is happening is because now when we go from lovely to great, we wait 0.4 seconds to go to great and then we again wait 0.4 seconds on the great to go to the next one. So we wait double the amount that we would need to wait. So what we do in these cases is we just simply set this to 0.2. So when we go to the last variant here, we wait, you know, half the time that we would want to wait on all the rest. And we also have this time, so 0.4 will be just 0.2. So now these two 0.2s will add up to 0.4. So in theory, we should wait the same amount of time. Exactly, looks pretty good. Of course, this is too fast. So what you would do in this case is just adjust the transitions on these. So maybe it's 0.8. So they are a little bit slower when they are coming in as well. And, and you know, the delay should also be increased. So let's say the base delay should be around one second, let's say. So we are waiting one second on each of these text layers. However, on the last one, it's 0.4. And on the variant one, it is point, 0.5. Sorry, I think I said 0.4, but it should be 0.5. So now you can see it's a little bit slower. We wait a little bit more on each of these texts. And you can see that it's a smooth continuous looping cycle effect because we set it up in the correct way. So now if we go back to the home screen, we can add an additional text layer right next to this one. So let me just copy this actually, put it right here, move it to the left, and we can just say framer is, and we're gonna see that framer is great, dream, and lovely. I really do hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions about this looping method, make sure to drop them in the comment section. I was trying to explain everything clearly, but you know, I might have missed something. Also, you can remix this project down in the description. So if you wanna take a look into this project file or just copy and paste this component to your frame website, you can do that. Just remix the project with the link down in the description. Also, if you are learning Framer and you're looking for great resources, you can check out Framer.University because I have a bunch of other tutorials, remixes, components, and yeah, just great resources that will probably be helpful um, when you're building Framer sites. And yeah, basically that's it. Make sure to like this video, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.